Hello everyone, this is Siddharthan. This is the last video in our data collection and data pre-processing module. In the previous video, we have discussed what are the data pre-processing steps that we need to do on numerical data set. And in this video, we will be taking a textual data and see what are the data pre-processing steps that we need to do before feeding it to a machine learning model for predictions. Okay, so in case you are watching my videos for the first time, I, this is Siddharthan and in this channel, I'm making a hands-on machine learning course with Python. So you can uh, check out the details in the description of this video. I'll give the details about my machine learning course and my machine learning project. So I will be uploading one machine learning project video uh, every Friday. Okay, so you can find all the details and the link for the playlist in the description of this video. Okay, so with that being said, let's get started with today's video. And for this video, we will be taking this fake news prediction data set. Okay, so I have already posted a video on this fake news prediction. And if you have watched that video, so you don't need to watch this video because it's basically the same procedure. Okay, so in case you haven't watched it or you want a better understanding of all the data pre-processing that we do on that text data so you can continue watching this video okay so now the first step is to upload our data set into this google collab environment okay so you can uh, search for google collab so if you are not aware of this so when you search for google collab so you will find this collab.research.google.com so, so there you can do your python programs okay so it is a cloud-based python uh, environment so there will be this connect option so you can connect your system from here so you can find this files option here files option here so there you can go to this upload option uh, to upload your data set file so now the data set which we are going to use is is about 100 mb in size and if we upload this data set it can take some time so what we need to do is so we can upload this data set in our google drive okay so then you can go to this uh, mount drive options okay so when you give this mount drive your google drive will be linked to your google collaboratory account and the important thing is both this account so this account in your google drive and uh, in google collaboratory should be the same account okay so in some cases we may be dealing with data sets that is about 1 gb 2 gb or even 10 gb in size so in that cases we cannot upload our data set every time we uh, open it in our google collab okay so in such cases we upload it to our google drive and process it from google collaborate so that's what we are going to do now i have already uploaded my fake news data set in uh, my drive so i'll give the link for this data set file in the description of my video so you can also find it in uh, kaggle so i'll give this mount drive so while mounting so okay so connect to google drive so now you need to uh, it will ask for your account so there you need to authorize it so once you authorize your account it will mount your drive okay so this is our drive so when you click this uh, arrow here it will give all the subfolders in it so i'll go to my drive and there you can see uh, all the uh, all the folders i have so i have stored this data set in this data sets folder so you can see here my drive data sets and fake news data set so i'll go here and this is my data set train.csv so this is a csv file so from here we can access this data set instead of uploading it every time in our google collab and uploading in google drive actually it takes very less time when compared to google uh, collab okay so the first step is to import the dependencies so i'll make a text here as importing the dependencies okay so the pre-processing of text data is more challenging and interesting than numerical data because there are a lot of steps which we need to do here because computers doesn't understand understand text well so we need to convert this text into some meaningful numbers some numerical data okay so these are the processing which we will be doing for this text data so let me import some basic libraries so i'll import numpy as cnp so we generally import numpy and other libraries in their short forms so instead of using numpy we can use uh, in in the for in a short form as cnp so that's the general convention everyone uses in python okay so now let's import pandas pandas as pd then i'll import another library called as re so re means it's regular expression so you can just uh, search in google about uh, um, regular expression library in python so you will find the documentation so it is very useful for uh, scanning and going through some text in the documents so this is called as a regular expression library numpy library is used for making arrays and pandas is for making 
data frames so data frames are nothing but structured tables so as we know that the data set is now in a csv file so csv means comma separated value and it is not easy to analyze the data from a csv file okay so to give it a better structure we will feed it to a pandas data frame so we have uploaded three libraries and now we need from nltk so nltk dot corpus import so from this particular library i'm importing a function so import stop words so i'll explain you what is meant by this stop words and other things when we uh, encounter this in this particular video so corpus means uh, some text uh, content so a corpus may uh, can be a paragraph or it can be a document which contains all those words okay so it's basically uh, the collection of words and NLTK means natural language toolkit. So this natural language toolkit library contains several functions and important uh, you know methods that we use for our text processing. And now let's import from NLTK dot stem dot porter stem dot porter import port stemmer okay so it's porter stemmer so then from sklearn dot preprocessing sorry so from sklearn dot feature extraction import extraction so it should be feature extraction dot text import tf idf vectorizer so we have already made a video on what is meant by this vectorization what is meant by this feature extraction and tf idf vectorizer i will also explain you in this video what are these things and uh, from sklearn dot model selection import train test split okay so these are the dependencies we need for this particular processing and now we need to download these stop words so it's also import nltk separately so import nltk so this nltk is the library and we are uh, importing this entire library in this particular line whereas in this line from this uh, you know library there is a separate module called as corpus and that contains a function called as stop words so we can also uh, import specific functions we need from a library whereas in this particular case we are importing the entire library so that's the difference between importing this nltk and uh, like this okay so that's the difference now we need to download nltk dot download stop words so let's run this to run a cell and go to the next one you can oh, i need to run this first okay so to run a particular cell and go to the next one you can press shift plus enter so this will uh, download all the uh, stop words so it is already uh, i think it's downloaded now we can print this uh, stop words Printing the stop words. So I'll show you what are these stop words. Print stop words dot words. English. So now we can see all the the list of stop words so these words are nothing but i me my myself we are ours etc so we have a lot of stop words so stop words are those words which can be repeated a lot of times in a paragraph or in a document okay but these words doesn't convey much meaning so these words are stop words so when we do this uh, data pre-processing we always encounter a lot of data a huge amount of data and these words doesn't convey much meaning so we need to remove these words from our uh, data set so for this purpose we need to uh, download these stop words to identify these words from our data set so that's the purpose of uh, downloading these stop words and the next step is uh, now we can go to the data pre-processing step so i'll make a text here as data pre-processing 
So the first step is to load our data set into a pandas data frame. So as I have told you earlier, we cannot access it easily from a CSV file. So I'm going to load the data to a pandas data frame. So let me create a variable called as news data set. Okay, so let me put it as news data and I'm going to use the function pd.readcsv. So this read CSV function is present in pandas library and this read CSV function will load the data set from a CSV file to a pandas data frame. So you can go to this files and uh, you can see this options here. So from there you can copy the path of this file and paste it in the quotes. Now you can run this and this will create a new data frame which contains this entire data set. So now let me print the first five rows of the data set here. So I make a comment here as first five rows of the data set. So it is always a good practice to mention uh, what you are doing in a line of code by these commands. So if someone else, you know, uh, sees your code, then it helps them to understand what you are doing in a in a line of code. So that's the importance of commenting. So I'll mention this data frame name as news data dot yet. So this yet function will print the first five rows of the data frame. So uh, we have this ID column, title column, author column, text column and label column. OK, so this is the title of the news. And here we have the author name of that particular news and what is the text entire text of that news and finally we have this label here uh, these are uh, if if the label is zero that means then the news is a real news and if the label is one then the news is a fake news and uh, the idea behind this data set is to train a machine learning model to let it understand which news are fake and which news can be you know real and this label helps, helps the model to understand it so i'll just make a text here as zero means real news and one means fake news okay so now let's see how many total data points we have so news data dot shape so this will tell us the number of rows and columns present in the data set so totally we have 20,800 rows and 5 columns. So these are the columns, right? ID, title, author, text, label, etc. And totally we have 20,800 rows. So 20,800 rows means if so we have that many different users. So we also call this as data point. So each of this uh, particular row represents a data point or a separate news. Okay. So totally we have these many uh, data points. So it is a pretty large data set but it is not the largest we may also deal with you know hundreds of thousands of data and even more than that so here we have 20,000 data which is uh, very good so if your data set is large then you can make better predictions with your model okay so the more the data the better your performance performance of the model is so now let's see if this data set contains any missing values so checking for checking for missing values news data set news data dot is null dot sum so this function will give us the number of missing values in each column so in this id column we don't have any uh, missing values in title column we have about 558 uh, missing values in author it's about uh, 1957 text and it is 39 okay so what this is so there can be few news newses and the author can be anonymous or the curator of this data set may not have found the author name so in that cases uh, we have this null values or those missing values okay so in this particular case we can replace all the missing values with null string so if a value is missing it will be represented as nan so nan means not a number okay so we need to replace this nan with null string so in in case of numerical data set we can impute it with mean value or mode value so we cannot find the mean value for this text data set right so in this case we will replace all the missing value with a null string so let me put it here we are replacing the missing values with null string and news data which is equal to news data dot fill in name and let's mention quotes here okay. so here fill in name means uh, 
not na means not available and uh, what we are doing is so here i have mentioned quotes so in this quotes if we if i mention uh, some words like let's say i mention a word like tree so what happens is all the missing values will be replaced with this word tree when i don't mention any words inside this uh, quotes then it is called as a null string so it is a string but it doesn't contain any text or value so i want to replace all the missing values all the nan values with this null string so if you just uh, you know feed this uh, data set which contains this nan value to our machine learning model it can throw some error so it doesn't understand those nan values so now we need to replace this with uh, this null string so let's run this okay so this will replace all of them now uh, what we are going to do this do is in this particular prediction we are going to take this title column and author column so we won't be uh, taking this text column so we will be analyzing our data set only with these two features so what i'm going to do is i'm going to combine this values in this author column to their corresponding title column so what happens is if we take this first row we will create a separate column and in that column it contains author name plus the title of their users and the second row contains their uh, the author name and the corresponding title so now let's merge the author name and news title okay so i'll mention the data frame and in this let's create a new uh, column called as content in this content let's combine the author name and title of the news so which is equal to news data author so this one quote here so okay author plus news data and now let's mention title okay so what we are doing is we are uh, creating a new uh, column called as content in this data set in this data frame so we have named this data frame as news data so we are creating a new column and in that column we are taking this uh, author column and we are just giving a space and combining it with this uh, the title of uh, that particular news so let's run this and now you can uh, again print the first five rows of the data frame now let's see what is this content column looks like okay so now there is this new column called as content and it contains the author name first and the title of the news in each of the rows okay so and now we are going to use this content column for further processing and now we will do this text processing on this particular column and not the other things okay so now let us separate the two important columns so here we need this content column and this label column okay so we don't need any other column so because we have already combined these two so i'm not going to uh, make prediction based on this text if you want to make uh, your prediction based on this text you can add this text column with this author and title column but it will take a long time because this data is very huge so that's why i'm taking this author and title alone so now let's separate this content and label so separating feature and target here the target is this label so the target is nothing but whether we are predicting whether it's real or fake so this is called as target and here the feature is nothing but this content column because our model is going to understand this features and it's going to predict the target as label one or zero or other things okay so now let's put uh, two variables as x and y and in x let me mention news data set dot drop um, columns so i'm going to drop a column here label so let us drop this particular uh, label column and now we need to mention axis axis is equal to one so here we are dropping a column so we are mentioning the axis is equal to one in case you are dropping a row we will be mentioning axis is equal to zero so now we are going to store this label column in y so news data label okay so now you can print x and y 
so this x doesn't contain labels when you print this y it will contain all the labels and now we can uh, do our processing on this x so y doesn't need any processing because it already is in the form of numerical values in the form of uh, labels now we are going to do an important uh, step here so this process is called as stemming okay so stemming is nothing but I'll mention what is meant by stemming here. Yes, stemming is the process of reducing a word to its keyword. Okay, so what is meant by this keyword? Let's say that there are words like uh, enjoyable, enjoyment, and uh, the uh, enjoying and enjoyed. So these words are there, and the root word for all of these words are nothing but enjoy. So this enjoy can be represented in uh, different forms. So we don't want all those different forms. So what we do is, if we have those kind of words, it will be reduced to a, uh, you know, its root word because root words are small and the processing can take place in a, a faster uh, time and the processing is you know more easier when you uh, you know reduce it to a root word so root word or keyword so let me put it as root word instead of keyword and for this purpose only we are going to use the porter stemmer function here so we are going to do this stemming function using this porter stemmer and we have imported this porter stemmer from nltk.stem.porter okay so Let's create a variable called as port stem. And in this port stem, I'll load this porter stemmer function. Okay, let's run this. So this will load this porter stemmer function to this port stem variable. So it is just, uh, you know, loading one instance of this function to a new variable. So let's run this. Okay, so now let's create a function to do this stemming procedure. So let's create this function and name this as stemming. And in this stemming, we need to give this content column, right? So let's give this parameter name as content. Okay, so now we need to do some functions in this uh, particular thing and let's name variable as stemmed content. So what we are going to do is stem uh, all of this text and put it in a variable called as stemmed content and this stemmed content is equal to re dot sub so so you can see here this regular expression as i have told you this is useful for you know uh, going through the text in a particular paragraph or a document just one second okay so now we need to mention this re dot sub so you can see the purpose of this particular function so this is for define so now let me mention um a to z a to z and caps a to z mm. so i'll explain you what i'm doing once i complete this line of code okay so i want to uh, you know go through all the content so all the text in this particular content column and take all the words from a to z so if the word is in this particular range it will take it so all the values or all the things that are words nothing but you know so the purpose of this is i want to remove all the punctuations like comma you know full stop on other things so that's why we are mentioning that i want all the content which is in the form of words so that's why we are mentioning uh, you know small letter words or capital letters so that's what we are doing is so it's either lower case or in upper cases so the other things are you know uh, you know they doesn't represent a word so i want all the words that are uh, not punctuations and other things other numbers so now the next step is to convert all the words to lower case letters so all the upper case higher case letters will be converted to a lower case letter and stemmed content so it's the same stemmed content variable so all this uh, letters will be changed to a lower letter form so again mention the stemmed content dot lower so this functions lower functions are, are present in this uh, regular expression library so and now 
stemmed content we need to separate all the words to do further processing for that we need to split all these words so stemmed contents is equal to stemmed content dot split so this will split all the words and now stemmed content so now let's do this stemming procedure stem content is equal to so you can see here we have imported this potter stemmer function in this potter stem variable so i'll mention it here port stem and in brackets let's mention word and now i'm going to create a for loop i'll explain you in a minute what we are doing in this particular line of code for word in stemmed content if not word in top words dot words english okay so what we are doing is so i'm going to apply this stemming function to all the words present in this uh, content column so we are taking all the words we are uh, you know excluding all the punctuation marks and other things we are just taking all the words and we are converting all it all of them to a lowercase letters and then we are splitting each of the words and now we are going to apply this uh, stem function to those words if that word is not present in this stop words so you can see here we have downloaded this stop words right so i will be taking each of the words in this content uh, column and if it is a stop words we don't want that so we want all the words that are not present in the stop words so basically we are removing all the stop words from this column and uh, when we take all of those words we are applying stemming so we are converting those words to a root word so what happens is so let's say that uh, so you can consider this first line so it, it contains this v so the v v is uh, an example for stop words so this particular word won't be considered and it will be removed for all the rows so all the uh, you know stop words will be removed and uh, now we can have the words like truth and uh, as i've told you earlier so let's say that there is a world called as uh, enjoyment so that world will be taken and it will be converted to its root word so that's what we are doing so we are taking all the words and if that word is not present in that stop words we are applying this uh, stemming function so that's what we are doing in this particular function called as stemming and finally let's return this stem so whenever you are working on a function so this diff is used for its uh, def means define so we are defining this function particular function and once this all of the you know procedures in this function is carried out we need to return this stemmed content so return stemmed content okay so now we have created a function so we didn't apply this function to our data set yet so we haven't applied to this uh, data set yet now we need to apply this to our data set so let's run this function again so it won't do anything so now we need to apply this stemming function to our content column okay so let's mention this news data content which is equal to use data content dot apply stemming okay so what we are doing is we are taking this uh, particular content column in our data frame and in that we are applying this stemming function so let's run this so it might take some time okay so this object is not callable so for test demo so i think we have made a mistake here mm, let me see what is that okay so it's nothing but so in this we need a function called as pot stem dot stem okay so this pot stem dot stem function only uh, does the stemming procedure so let's run this again okay so this is running so this will uh, stem all the words to its corresponding root words and this might take some time because this data set is very huge okay so it may take a minute or two so once we apply this stemming functions to we have uh, you know the important text data 
and once we have those important text data we can convert this text data to a numerical value so what we do is we use a method called as feature extraction and in that we will convert all this uh, text to a feature vectors okay so let me pass this video until it's run okay so it took about three to four minutes so now i'm going to print this um news data set dot content so let's see whether this stemming has happened here so you can compare this particular uh, stemmed content to the content which we originally add okay so all this words has been splitted okay and uh, and all the uh, stemming has been applied to uh, you know reduce it to its co uh, corresponding root words so now we can separate the data to their uh, corresponding features and targets so i'll create two variables as sorry as x and y and in x i am going to take this news data set dot content and in y okay, so dot values and let's take all the labels in y so news data set label values so these are the two things which we need so news data set okay so it's news data so these are the two things which we need here x is the feature and y is the corresponding label so you can print this x and y separately to see what are them so this is x and let's print y as well okay so the y is nothing but uh, it's either 1 or 0 so now let's uh, print the shape of y so y dot shape okay so we should mention this parenthesis y dot shape 20800 now we can apply the feature extraction so now we are going to convert all these uh, words to a, their corresponding feature vectors so converting the textual data to feature vectors so if you remember we have imported this tf uh, idf vectorizer and we are going to use this particular function vectorizer is equal to so let's load this tf idf vectorizer function to this vectorizer variable and vectorizer dot fit so we are fitting this fitting all uh, the data this content to this particular vectorizer function so we are going to transform this x okay so first we need to fit the x and now we need to transform it eraser dot transform x okay so we are uh, fitting it so it now understand what are these words and now this vectorizer can transform all the words to their corresponding feature vectors so this tf represents term frequency and idf represents inverse document frequency so it finds uh, the words which are repeated a lot of time and it assigns some importance of values to it so by this it understand if a word is you know meaningful or not so let's say that we are uh, you know predicting whether a mail is a real, uh, real mail, a uh, normal mail, or a spam mail. So spam mails contains the words like uh, offer, free, discounts, etc. So when you apply this kind of TF idea vectorizer to this to those data sets, it can uh, identify that those words are repeated in spam mails, and this will help our model to understand what mails are spam mail and which mails are uh, normal mails. So let's run this. Okay, so this object no attribute lower. okay so what happened is i have missed one line of code here so once we apply this stemming function so we need to join all those words so all the words in uh, this particular line uh, will be 
combined together so before if we have seen the output will be like all these words will be separated by commas and they will be enclosed in list so it, it shouldn't happen so we need to join all the words in one line so we need to use this dot join function okay dot stem content so i have uh, you know included this particular line of code and rerun all the things here so this is the mistake that we have did in this particular line so now we can run this vectorizer function and see whether it is working or not okay so it has i think it has uh, worked properly now let's print x and see whether it has converted all this text data to feature vectors now we can see here it contains a lot of numbers so these are the feature vectors for all those corresponding words so when you have printed this x before so we have all these words right so now you can see this x it has converted to uh, numbers so each of these words has their corresponding uh, numerical values so this is how you can apply this uh, vectorizer functions so the next step will be to uh, split your data set into training data and testing data and once you split your data into training data and testing data you can feed it to your machine learning model so this is about data pre-processing of text data so this is the general procedure which we follow but it is all you know there are few things that may change depending on other data sets but it is the general procedure so if you want to know further about how to split this data into training and test data and how to do further predictions you can go to the machine learning project playlist uh, in my channel and there in the fifth project is about fake news prediction and there you will uh, find how to feed this data to a machine learning model and make predictions so i hope you have understood uh, all the contents that we have discussed in this video i'll see you in the next video thanks